No, it's so funny working in a restaurant because all of a sudden you realize that people develop this really weird set of standards that they don't have in real life, you know what I mean? Like, like they'll walk into a restaurant and they'll give me back a knife with water spots on it. They'll be like, ooh, my oh, knife is dirty. And I'm like, yeah, but she'll put a dick in your mouth, you know? Like, <laughs> like where does that come from? Like, oh, I dropped my fork. I'm like, oh, you lick a pee hole. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, like, a guy I hooked up with came into my restaurant one time and was like, oh, I dropped my fork. And I'm like, you made out with my butt two days ago. Like, you should <laughs> but I didn't say anything because his wife was there, so then, like, I am the asshole. When did you know you wanted to be a comedian? Well, uh, it wasn't, like, I'd always been, like, funny my whole life, and I'd always had, like, those yearbook things that were like, ooh, see you on SNL, hey, you can't just <laughs> like, it was always kind of one of those things where I didn't really breed myself to do anything else besides entertain, like... You know, like, I didn't really focus on any other skills. Uh, but I didn't, I this thought of stand-up absolutely scared the shit out of me, and I actually got talked into it while I was drunk at a party in college. <laughs> Seems to be a common theme tonight. Thank you, Goldschlager. <laughs> <laughs> but they sponsored me. I have a tattoo across my chest. So, um, like, uh, no, but it was, we were just doing a benefit for the theater department at Cal State Long Beach, and uh, they were like, do it, do it. And I'm like, no. And they're like, come on, everybody's doing it. Like, people that weren't even that funny. I mean, like, just all of our friends were doing it mm -hmm. to make money. And I was like, all right, whatever. And uh, I think I got drunk before the show, too. Thanks, Jägermeister. <laughs> sponsors. This is literally what happened. And it was one of those things where I initially said, if I did it, I don't want anybody I know to be there, because I want to know that I'm funny without people that know me, and it turns out everybody I knew, <laughs> it was the, our whole theater department, and they laughed. And I was like, okay, that felt really good. And then I did a bringer at the comedy store, I think my second show ever, and I still had a bunch of friends, and they laughed. And the third show I did, I only knew like two people in the audience, and people were still laughing. So I was like, okay, yeah. all right, we'll try this We'll try this out. But you know, I was real lazy, did it once a month for like a year, and then maybe <laughs> three times a week for a year. And then I left for three years, and got back a year ago and now it's like I can't do anything else. It's like, <laughs> it's like my own personal life turner, you know, like every night I'm like, okay, fucking hit me again, comedy. Like, <laughs> just grab my ankles and surrender to the microphone. <laughs> yeah, my comedy came from this dark place when I was getting wasted and now I'm out of that. And they're like, well, we're still in it. We're having a ball, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you have a problem, you should get help. <laughs> <laughs>